Hi, this is Steve Caldwell, and today I'm going to show you how you can use an external controller to actually move the pointer on your computer screen of your mouse. Uh, for this particular project, I've set up the left knob that I'm pointing to here as a knob to move for horizontal movement. The knob next to it will control the vertical movement. And then I'm going to use this button here uh, to control fine tuning. Uh, basically, if you push the button and hold it, these knobs will move less distance than if you have it released. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get to the, for the overview of the presets and how they're all set up. This uh, particular project is a little more involved than most that we've done before, so we're going to be using a number of global variables to, con to, to, to control things, and um, we'll go from there. Unlike the other videos, in order to save time, I'm not going to start the project from scratch, but I'm going to use the pro project that I've already built, and I'm going to go through each of the presets, each of the translators, and what they do one at a time. So first of all, uh, there's the INIT preset. Uh, this is something I like to do with most projects. Uh, to make sure that all the global variables are set to a known state and if any other housekeeping activities that need to occur happen as well. So I actually have one that uh, happens, the incoming trigger is with the project opens and it will initiate a INIT, a timer called INIT with a one second delay. Uh, I'll also have a translator that monitors for the escape key on my computer keyboard and it also will kick off that one shot in uh, INET timer but this time with zero delay. The reason I do a one second delay is just give the project a little time to open uh, when you've opened up a new project and it's not needed when you do a physical escape key. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple of uh, translators that are actually going to happen when the INET uh, timer clicks off. Uh, the first translator here is going to set a number of global variables. You'll see there's none, it says none here as far as output. There's no output but a bunch of variables will get set uh, and also the mouse movement uh, will default to a, a known position on the center of the screen. Looking at the set global variables translator, I'm going to uh, use that. It's not going to have an output, but it's going to actually set the various global variables that I use in the project. I like to do this for two reasons. One, it helps document the pro project so that you know what global variables you use and what you're using them for. And then uh, the secondly, uh, it uh, actually puts your project to a known state. So G1 here is going to be the screen width for my screen. G2 is the screen height. GA is going to set the current X value of a controller and it's going to be used for mouse X positioning. And uh, GB is going to be the value for Y positioning. And then I'm going to monitor the values of the, of the controllers. I'm going to use the, the X value and the Y value. Then there's some multipliers that we're going to use. Those are going to be used to scale to the screen width we have. And uh, then uh, there's going to be a fine tuning button that I set up that if pressed will only move the cursor a little bit or the pointer a little bit and then uh, a couple other housekeeping things that need to happen here. So with that, let me just go through this INET timer and the how the global variables are set. So over here you can see the, um, the, the screen size is set to 1920. Uh, the height is set to 1080. Uh, then we initialize uh, some of the uh, some of the values. Uh, we set the X position to one half of the screen width, so it sets it to the center of the screen uh, uh, vertically, uh, horizontally, I mean. And then we have the other one that sets a y, uh, the Y position or sets uh, sets it vertically on the screen to the middle of the screen. Uh, then we set up some initial values here so that we can make sure that uh, we have a known state, uh, how much movement the mouse is, uh, has done in the last 
go around and then uh, we set up an acceleration factor and again since a mouse uh, or a controller is only going to move for value to 0 to 127 and in my case here the screen is going to move a value of uh, 1920 width uh, I'm going to have to scale it so that the, uh, the pointer moves more than one position every time I twist the knob to the right or the left and so I simply take that and then I uh, uh, divide the um, I divide the screen width by 127 and then I add 1 so that I fix the rounding error and then I do the same thing for the screen height. Uh, then I have a controller that is if it's set to 1 is uh, going to only move the cursor one value other than the factored value that I have up here. And then I have a couple of uh, other housekeeping uh, uh, values that we set uh, and those will be explained as we go through the mouse movement. So again this particular section is all uh, happening under two conditions. One when the project is open as shown right here and two when I physically hit an escape key on my keyboard. The other thing that happens when the INET uh, timer triggers is uh, we're actually going to um, we're actually going to center the cursor. GA is the value for the uh, the screen width, and we're going to center the cursor the middle of the screen for the width, middle of the screen for the height. Now we're going to set up the knobs. Uh, the first knob will be the left and right knob and the control value here will set that and we'll move the mouse position based on the value of the knob. However, we're going to use some rules to scale that out so that we can go the full screen width. There's an up and down knob. We'll use that to control the up and down position for the mouse. And then we use the note on for the button when I'm holding it down to basically set a variable that allows us to fine-tune or do different logic in the rules for the up and down knobs and the left and right knobs and then uh, releasing that same note will uh, turn off that particular function. So let's dive in right now to the left right knob. Uh, when you twist the knob what's going to happen is the value of PP is going to get set and what we're going to do is we're going to add that to the current position to determine the mouse movement that we have. Then we're going to multiply it by the, uh, the factor that, we've that we identified uh, or the multiplier that we identified earlier to determine the new position that we want to go to. Uh, however, if the variable for fine-tuning is turned on, we're going to skip over this entire section here and go straight to fine-tuning and only increment or decrement by one. If fine-tuning is turned off, then we need to do some additional rules. Uh, if we are greater than the width of the screen, we only want to go the width of the screen. If we are less than one, uh, we don't want to go less than the less pos least position of the screen, so we set it to zero. Uh, and then we determine the value that we want to set for the, the positioning and then we do a little bit of house cleaning here uh, to de determine uh, this is basically if there's a, a fine-tuned position there that that fine-tuned position gets captured back into the variable so that it doesn't mess things up later and then again in fine-tuning uh, all we're doing is incrementing or decrementing by one uh, there's a little bit of difference on the up down uh, it does the same basic thing with one exception. I wanted the right turn of the knob to go up and the left turn of the knob to go down. And by default it was going in the opposite direction. So by subtracting 127 from the value of the controller it actually reverses the direction so the knob goes up and down. Uh, finally, uh, fine tuning on all that does is when I push and hold the knob it sets the variable for fine tuning GG to 1. If I release that knob it sets it back to 0. 
So that's what tells in the up and down and right to left things whether I'm going to skip over the scaling section and go straight to the fine tuning section or whether I'm going to use the uh, scaling to make sure that we've uh, scaled it out or multiplied it out uh, to the screen width. Uh, now showing the outgoing. Uh, in both cases they're identical. All we're really doing is uh, with the rules we're setting the value of GA in the left and right movement. We're setting the value for GB in the up and down movement and so what that leaves you is uh, absolute mouse position to the new position you want to go. Okay so now let's see things in action. First of all I've got the program running right now so we'll actually be able to see what's happening. I'm actually on the screen that I'm controlling. I'm going to press the escape key on my keyboard to get our, the, um, the pointer to the middle of the screen. And if you look over to the left and the bottom here as I'm turning this knob left and right, I'm turning it to the right, it moves to the right, turn it to the left, it moves to the left. If I move the next knob right, it goes up. If I move it to the left, it goes down. And if I hold the button number one here, while turning a knob, and I'll have to contort my, you can see I'm only moving it slight movement, so that's the fine tuning, and I can fine tune up and down, and if I release that knob, it goes back to the normal mouse movement. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach us at www.bohm.com. If you want a copy of this uh, project, uh, feel free to go to the Q&A section in bohm.com. I'll give you a pointer to it so you can download and play with it yourself. And thanks again for watching. This is Steve Caldwell signing off.